how much better the Sony a7 IV is compared to its predecessor Sony a7 III and the high-end video focused camera Sony a7S III in terms of video and photo performance, color, skin tone and ISO in S-Log3, HLG3 and S-Cine tone, rolling shutter performance, dynamic range, sharpness in 4K 25-50p, Full HD 25 and 50p, more rave, autofocus and all other aspects. Let's find out. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On channel from Russia with Love. So, A7 III has been a workhorse for a lot of Sony shooters for both photo and video work for many years and now we have an A7 IV, a high-end 33 megapixel full-frame camera that is superior than A7 III in almost any way, except for the price of course, but how does it stack up against a thousand dollars more expensive low-light beast Sony A7S III? I've uploaded this video in full resolution to a cloud server so the YouTube's compression wouldn't mess up the footage. The link is in the description below and I highly suggest you download the file and watch it on the biggest screen possible. I've watched all of the footage on my 5K iMac so my conclusions shall be pretty accurate. We covered a lot of different aspects in this comparison so feel free to use timestamps in this video to find the topics you're most interested in. Throughout the test we used the same lenses on a7 IV and a7S III, Sony 35mm f1.8 and also Tamron 28-75 f2.8 set on 35mm on the Sony a7 III. But we closed down the aperture to f5.6 in most cases so the sharpness difference shouldn't be that noticeable between those lenses. Let's start off with the sharpness and detail comparison. All cameras are set to PP off, neutral with all the parameters set to zero and using XAVC S4K 25P with the best options available. The upper part of the picture with spider checker text is 5 times zoomed in picture from each camera. It seems like PP off neutral on A7 III applies a little bit of digital sharpening to the footage no matter it's set to zero sharpening. So I would say both A7 III and a7 IV are almost identically sharp thanks to the oversampling of 6K and 7K video respectively to 4K. a7S III is a bit softer, but not too much. In 4K 50 and 60p, the a7 IV turns on the Super 35 crop. So we did two different tests. Here you can see the a7 III with 4K Super 35 crop enabled and the a7S III is using clear image zoom at 1.5x in 4K as well. Once again, the a7 III looks over sharpened a little bit and a7 IV looks great and the a7S is still doing really good considering that it's a digital crop with clear image zoom. For the second test, we switched the lens on the a7 IV to Tamron 17-28 f2.8 at 22mm so the field of view in 4K50 is around 35mm full frame equivalent. The sharpness is still a touch better than on the a7S III but not as good as 4K25 since there is no more down sampling, just a crop. But when switching to 1080p 25 frames per second the situation flips. a7S III is now much sharper than a7IV and just destroys the a7 III. I think it's because of oversampling from 4K to 1080p on the a7S III and the pixel beating on the a7 III and a7 IV. 1080p 50 frames a second looks almost identical to 1080p 25 frames per second on all three cameras. Here is the chart I made with the crops from different resolutions so you can compare all of them side by side. Then comes the Moray test. In 4K all cameras are doing great, probably in 1080p a7 III and a7 IV can struggle more because of the pixel beating I've mentioned, so be careful. Maybe we should have chosen a different pattern to check it out and try out 1080p, but overall in 4K everything should be fine with Moray on all three cameras. And now let's have a look at a very popular profile as Cinetone on the a7S III and a7 IV and PP off neutral on the a7 III since it doesn't have the S Cinetone and we'll check different ISO values, raising those by one stop at a time. 
By the way, the guy in this shot is my big friend, his name is Misha, he's the owner of A7 III and A7 IV, a huge thank you to him for making this video comparison possible. Here is his Instagram. Straight away I see the difference in color and skin tone. A7 III leans towards magenta more, A7 IV has a little more red and the A7S III is a little more green. The white balance is identical in all three cameras. Till ISO 6400, all cameras show great performance in my opinion. On ISO 6400, A7 IV looks a bit better than the A7 III and the A7S III looks the best. On ISO 12800, we start to see the effects of in-camera denoise on the A7 III, also noisier shadows and a little color shift, but it still looks okay. The A7 IV looks noisy, but usable. The A7S III is still noisy, but a touch better than the A7 IV. ISO 25600 has heavy noise reduction on the A7 III and much lower saturation than previously with the lower ISOs. 51200 ISO is unusable, I think, and only the A7S III is on the edge of being usable. And at 102,400 ISO, the A7S III also looks really bad. Just out of curiosity, here are the higher ISO values on the A7S III. I have to mention that in my opinion PP off and S Cinetone are not the best low light profiles on Sony cameras, especially 10-bit cameras and me and my friend Misha already proved it in our big high ISO test video, in which we can clearly see that ISO 12800 in PP off on Sony A7 III has the same amount of noise as S-Log3 S Gamma 3 Cine at 204800 ISO on the Sony A7S III when exposed correctly at plus 1.7 plus 2 stops over or exposed to the right. I'll leave a link to full video down below. It's really interesting how correct exposure effects on the picture quality in Sony cameras. You can check it out after you finish this video. So, since we've talked about S-Log3 a bit, let's watch the S-Log3 S Gavin 3 Cine high ISO test. But first, let's have a look at the skin tone. The A7 III is still a little magenta, A7 IV is now a bit more green and A7S III is a bit green as well. Probably the green tint is caused by the light itself or the light diffusion and it's easily correctable in post, so no worries. All three cameras have exactly the same color grade using Alistair Chapman LUTs and I have a full S-Log3 workflow video tutorial with those LUTs available for free download. The link is in the description as usual. So, until ISO 1600 with correctly exposed image at plus 2 EV, all three cameras show great performance. On 3200 ISO we have the second native ISO on Sony A7 IV and the image cleans up even more. At 6400 ISO we start to see a magenta color shift on A7 III. A7 IV looks great and the A7S III great as well. 12800 ISO is ok on the A7 III, but the shadows are pretty noisy. A7 IV looks very good and the A7S III has the second native ISO in S-Log at 12800, so it's the cleanest. 25600 ISO is usable on the A7 III and looks good on the A7 IV. 102400 ISO is unusable on the A7 III. It's flat, it's heavily denoised, it has purple tint and magenta noise. A7 IV is still usable in certain circumstances, I think, and there is no surprise that A7S III looks good at 102400 ISO. The 204000 ISO is almost usable on the A7S III as well, and I shot some commercial reportage with this ISO in S-Log3 and the clients were pretty happy. One more very popular profile on Sony cameras is HLG. We chose HLG3 BT2020 as it's suggested by many pro users, but I myself never use HLG, I only use S-Log3. But nevertheless, let's watch the test as well. I personally don't like how skin tone looks in HLG. It's uh, reddish pink on A7 III, a bit more natural on A7 IV and reddish on A7S III. Till ISO 6400, all three cameras are very good. At 6400, A7 III looks a little worse than A7 IV and A7S III. ISO 12800 desaturates the image on the A7 III and adds a lot of digital in-camera denoise. 
but it's still usable. A7 IV looks decent, A7S III looks good too. 25,600 ISO looks worse on the A7 III and the A7 IV and A7S III are a bit noisy. I'm just getting confused by the names of those cameras, sorry guys but still usable. 51200 ISO is unusable on A7 III, very heavy noise reduction, blurry image, purple tint and colored noise especially on the corners. 51200 ISO on A7 IV and A7S III is usable I think, but we start to see the in-camera D noise thus getting blurrier picture. ISO 100 2000 is almost unusable as far as I'm concerned on all three cameras. And now let's walk through the same profiles but with the lens cap on to see the noise patterns on each ISO value. We've raised the highlights by 100 in post so the noise is much more visible. Don't be scared that the S-Log appears so noisy, S-Log loves light and all the noise is always hidden in the shadows so when you shoot at plus 1.7 or plus 2 EV exposing to the right the noise will be surpassed after color grading. So this test with the lens cap is just for overall understanding how each ISO value performs in different profiles and to detect second native ISOs of A7 IV and A7S III. Looking at this test I noticed that the A7 III in S-Log3 starts to show magenta colored noise especially in the corner since ISO 800 which is the native ISO in S-Log3 for this camera so I wouldn't suggest shooting in S-Log3 on 8-bit cameras like A7 III, I prefer S-Log2 on such cameras and I have a full video tutorial as well about S-Log2 workflow with 8-bit cameras. I know guys that I'm saying it too often but the link is in the description below. A7 IV has smaller grain thanks to down sampling from 7K to 4K, thus it looks more fine, more like film grain and until ISO 10000 it looks better than the A7S III. But after ISO 12800 A7S III is still the low light king and especially after higher values like 100 2400 ISO. In HLG3 we've also raised the midtones by 50 because it has a lot more contrast so you can see the noise pattern better. ISO 125 we see a strong colored magenta tint on A7 III, so in my opinion HLG3 is also not a great option for A7 III. And on higher ISOs the right corner of the A7 III's picture becomes green for some reason. The A7 IV looks decent and at 16000 ISO looks cleaner than the A7S III. After 16000 ISO, A7S III is very noisy. In S Cinetone color and S Cinetone gamma, I also raised the midtones by 50 and highlights by 100, in post of course, so you can see the noise and the difference better. The PP of neutral on the A7 III is so contrasty and has such deep shadows that you almost can't see the noise until ISO 3200, but after that it starts to have a strong magenta tint and green blocky color at the right on higher ISOs. As Cinetone on the A7 IV is also very contrasty, the second native ISO here is 500 and 25600 ISO is the highest I would use. On A7S III the second native ISO in S Cinetone is 2000 and the highest ISO I would use is 64000. Ooh, we're done with the picture profiles and ISOs, if you are still here please consider smashing like and subscribe buttons as I say in the videos and hit the notifications bell, thank you. Now be ready for some shaky footage because it's rolling shutter test time. 
As you can see at 70mm in 4K on A7 III we have a very strong rolling shutter effect with the vertical lines being heavily distorted and the whole picture is like a jelly. A7 IV is doing a noticeably better job but it's still far from perfect. And the a7s III is almost a class leading camera in this aspect and we see the minimal rolling shutter effect. I can say it's almost non-existent and I hope you didn't get seasick after watching this test. Now let's have a look at dynamic range in s 3 s Gavin 3 Cine. I'm not Gerald Undone and I don't have access to a special dynamic range measurer if there is a word, but a good old HDR scene outside is always a good thing to look at. We exposed for the sky, so it's not blown out, and also, as you can see, we have a very dark garage in the shot. All cameras are set to native ISO for s 3 and have the same color grade. A7 III is doing great, but has a little noisier shadows and a little magenta tint. Both a7 IV and a7s III look outstanding, in my opinion, and I can't tell any major difference. But if you did notice the difference in dynamic range between those two cameras, play it right down in the comment section below. The AF test is mostly focused on a7 IV and a7s III. They had the same Sony 35 f1.8 lens, and we shot in s 3 the toughest profile for autofocus, and we used the fastest sensitivity and speed autofocus settings on all cameras. And as far as I can tell, the AF accuracy and speed is identical on a7 IV and the a7s III. And it's a well-known fact that the a7 III is a bit slower and less reliable, but still pretty good in this term. Now let's have a look at uncompressed RAW photos exported in the highest quality JPEGs. The resolution difference between 12, 24 and 33 megapixel is noticeable, but keep in mind that we've zoomed in 10 times to really see the difference. So a7 III and especially a7 IV have more detail, so you can crop in a little more with those cameras. Then we've pushed the exposure by 5 stops and we can see that the a7 III has noticeably noisier shadows and a slight green tint. So here is a chart I've made with resolutions, file sizes, frames a second and buffer info. And finally comes the overheating test for a7 IV. I have to mention that after using Sony a7S III for one and a half years, I didn't have any issues with overheating, even under direct sun and plus 30 degrees Celsius in 4K50. My friends with a7 III cameras also didn't complain about any overheating and in both cases cameras were set to high temperature mode on and we were shooting in 4K 25p. I didn't have enough time to make all of these tests with all three cameras, so my friend Misha did all the tests at his studio. It was 23 degrees Celsius room temperature on a tripod and with the screen flipped out. So here are the results. As you can see, you'd better turn on the high temperature mode right after you purchase your camera. Also, it's important to set the camera to airplane mode if you plan on shooting for more than half an hour in 4K, because it leads to overheating as well, especially when you're connected to any device via Wi-Fi. External monitor also decreases the runtime before overheating, as you can see from this chart. And all of those issues are non-existent on the a7s III. As a disclaimer, I have to say that all of these tests were done with a total cool down of the camera before each test, but it's still not a scientific test by any means, just some points of reference for you guys. I can say that if you are using airplane mode, flip the screen out and use tripod, you'll be okay indoors in most scenarios. When it comes to handheld operation or direct sun, the results might be worse, I'm sure. Also using the external recorder only without recording internally to the SD card will reduce overheating as well. So I can say that overheating might become an issue for certain shooting scenarios and in certain circumstances. And now let's walk through extra benefits of a7 IV over a7 III and a7s III. 
you can connect A7 IV wirelessly to your computer and immediately send raw photos to it as if it was a cable connection while shooting, which is a very nice addition for studio photographers. A7 IV can work as a webcam straight out of the box with a USB cable connection. A7 IV has a dedicated photo video switch which is a great tool for hybrid shooters. A7 III had only 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and A7 IV has 5 GHz, which provides minimal lag with remote control with a smartphone or a computer. All in all, A7 IV is a very capable and advanced camera, especially for photography with improved autofocus, stabilization, color size, buffer, resolution and extra features over A7 III. And it is totally worth extra $500 for such an upgrade. On the video side, I do love the image quality, color, sharpness, the ability to use Super 35 crop in 4K, but in comparison with Sony A7S III, it lacks 4K 120, external raw recording, has a Super 35 crop in 4K 50 and 60, has softer 1080p, lower usable ISO and most importantly potential overheating issues. And all of those factors are extremely important to me as a pro videographer. So I also do think that the A7S III is worth the money being $1000 more expensive. I would save up and go for it once again. I would say A7 IV is almost a perfect camera for a photographer and a great second camera for Sony A7S III or a main camera for specific types of content which doesn't require long takes in 4K under burning sun, raw recording or 120p 4K slow motion. All in all, I did enjoy using this camera and I highly recommend it to you guys at least to rent it for a day or two and try it out yourself. After all, gear is gear and you can get awesome shots and tell good stories with almost any modern camera. Hope you did enjoy this very long and nerdy video guys. And here are a couple of videos for you to watch next. This was Oleg Nikitin, No Limits on channel from Russia with love. Take care guys. Bye.